centrifugal clutch so why we are using uh, calling this centrifugal here we will make use of the centrifugal force okay for this working mm, so if you look at this this outside is a drum this is not connected to inside one okay this inside is a different one outside is a different one and uh, inside see inside uh, inside is uh, directly from the let's say inside is directly from uh, engine okay and outside is connected to some load you want to turn some machine you want to turn some machine and uh, you know by using this inside you need to turn the drum you need to turn the drum how to turn the drum actually if you observe these are not connected okay these are not connected like this if it is a connected it cannot expand okay you may get that out so these are not connected so the may be, these may be like this so it can be like this individual one so here what is the principle here what is the principle see i start rotating these first let me introduce their names so this is called as a shoe okay shoe means just like a block like this okay we have some block like this this is calling as a shoe so don't think that this is a, some different name and this is a shoe and the shoe is connected to the center with a spring and uh, at, at, on, at the you know outer side of the shoe we have a friction lining like this we have a friction lining like this and uh, like this we have a uh, four sets of shoes like this we have a uh, four sets of uh, shoes so what happen when it is rotating when it is rotating it will exert some centrifugal force it will exert some centrifugal force on the rotating body and because of that centrifugal force this shoe the you know try to move in this direction outward direction if it is a rigid body here if the shoe is connected to the center with a rigid body then there is no scope for you know axial or outward movement of the shoe but so instead of connecting with a rigid body i have chosen the spring here okay that is why i have chosen the spring here so that it will allow the you know outward direction outward movement of the shoe here so when i am turning this then this will slowly move away from the center and uh, at a particular time at a point of time what happens it will come and uh, join with this uh, drum okay this will come and uh, join with the drum because this is a frictional lining then this uh, start rotating the drum also okay understood the concept that is the logic here because we are turning this because of that centrifugal force will be produced and uh, because of that centrifugal force the shoe try to go outward of the center and since it is connected with a spring with the cent center from the shoe then the spring will allow the outward movement of the shoe then slowly it will go outward and at a particular speed it will come under uh, in contact with the outer drum and because of the friction lining it will start rotating the drum also that is the that is the you know basic operation I mean, best mechanism here so i will take one particular shoe here okay i will take one particular shoe see this is the drum this is the drum and uh, i will take a shoe like this and uh, this is uh, connected with the center like this this is a o okay and we have a friction lining like this at the outside so here from sh shoe center to the the center of rotation the radius is a uh, rs let's say this is the rs from here to here and then from center to the outer drum this radius is rd okay so you know when the inner part is not rotating then this is not moving out okay and even for the smaller value of even for the smaller values of you know angular velocity it is it is not going to start you know moving outward but there is a value at which there is a value omega 1 at which it start going or it start engaging okay it start going outward at which 
it start engaging engaging means not with the drum you start engaging means you start moving away from the moving away from the uh, sorry here engaging means you just start moving and engaging with the drum okay so up to drum up to drum when it's trying to you know move away from the center then there is a freak you know spring force acting in the downward direction so the the you know centrifugal force fc is going in the opposite direction of the radial if you i mean going away from the center but spring force is coming you know towards the center okay like this okay and uh, omega one is at which the at which it it means shoe at which the shoe start engaging with the drum okay so beyond that it will it, it cannot go after that that means the spring force is only up to that position why because the spring force what is the formula for spring force f equal to k into x okay x means the extension so force is depending on the k into x the extension of the spring and k is the stiffness constant okay so this is the this is the value that means at omega 1 that means the let's say this is the mass m of the shoe so the centrifugal force okay what is the centrifugal force mr omega square you remember this i think you might be knowing this values so m r omega square that is the centrifugal force okay but here r is nothing but rs and omega is anything but here i am i am assuming that just now the shoe came and started engaging with the drum okay so let's say that is at a omega 1 omega 1 but here this is nothing but fs why because the maximum stretchable you know stretchable position of the spring is up to this position okay after that it cannot stretch so when it is not stretching then it is not exiting any other you know uh, spring force so this is the this is the equation and uh, let's say now i am rotating the d square to omega 2 where omega 2 is greater than omega 1 ah uh, okay in that case what happened what is the friction um, centrifugal force let's say this is a fc1 otherwise i will call this as a fc1 and this is fc2 then m rs omega 2 square okay so this is the this is the you know centrifugal force that is going outside see at that position see centrifugal force fc2 is going like this from the center this is the center but a spring force is acting in the downward direction fs so what is the next net force net force f equal to fc2 minus fs if i substitute these two then it will become m r s omega 2 whole square minus omega 1 whole square this is the net force okay the net force that is uh, acting on the drum so this much uh, amount of force is uh, acting here the net force f is acting here okay and uh, we have a friction between these two so because of that friction how much frictional force is there that is a f that is tangential to the acting force and uh, tangential to the acting force and also to the tangential to the drum okay this is a mu into f from the friction you can see this f in f small f equal to mu into f and from here i can find out the torque value okay so what is the torque torque t equal to frictional force that is acting tangential f into the radius radius of what where where exactly the friction is acting on the drum so the drum radius okay that is the distance of rd so finally we derived at this position at this formula and if i write this formula by substituting uh, other values i will write at the top here then it will become torque equal to mu into 
f mu into f what is the f value f means net force here so that is a m r s r d omega 2 square minus omega 1 square so this is the final formula okay this is this is how we need to find out the torque produced in the centrifugal force okay and yeah see here what is the advantage of the centrifugal force why we are going again and i know new for the new types of clutches when other thing is working good other clutches are working good see if you observe here it started from the zero the rotation started from the zero and it start you know rotating and it reached omega one so until omega one this is not going and touching the drum okay but only after omega one it is going and touching the drum so see the load is given to the in this case the load is given to the clutch load given to the given to the clutch only after some time okay after some time not immediately only after some time but not the immediately okay so in that type of uh, you know situation we can use this one so applications what are the applications see it can be used from the low handling the low loads loads to up to heavy loads it can handle even heavy loads also heavy loads also so for example for the lower loads we if you take uh, something like uh, you know LAN cutters so LAN cutters if you observe first they will start that okay it will say take, take some time it will take some time because the LAN cutter uh, you know the motor whichever you are carrying its capacity is very less okay so if you start cutting immediately after starting your engine then it may break so you will first start that and it will you know gain some momentum and after that if you apply load apply load means cutting the tree or whatever then it can handle that okay but if you initially step if you give that then it may not handle so in the in the, so low loads it can this this is very much suitable even in the heavy loads also this is very much suitable for engineering services, general studies video lectures, visit www.iesgeneralstudies.com. For mechanical engineering video lectures and question and answer discussion, visit www.getnet.com.